Tanya, you still here? Still here, Marcus. Tell Dom I may have a lead on his wife, but it doesn't look like Anya, what'd you find? A lead on a Jane Doe, but it doesn't look like she... I'll fill you in later, Dom. I have to get back to control. All right, Anya. Good luck. Damn it! Kill these goddamn grubs. Let's move! Die. Good to see you. What are we looking at? Locust Reed. Follow me. Follow me is pretty generic action game dialogue and you don't actually have to follow anyone when they say follow me, but sometimes it is beneficial because although this game is linear you can still get lost and the AI will go in the proper direction. They'll often lead you right to the goal just in case you uh, have no idea where the fuck you're going. Which happened to me quite a few times when I was first playing the game, especially in this hospital. Because there are a lot of fucking doors in a hospital. Right up here is our first encounter with real enemies. And it can turn into an all-out firefight if you fuck up badly enough. But really, if you're patient and wait for the proper audio cues, you can kill everyone in one fell swoop. It's basically, this encounter is just an introduction to how explosive barrels work, honestly. And we're going to use a grenade for extra style points, but that's incredibly unnecessary. It's just something I'm doing for the flair of it. For some reason, when these locusts break into the building, they don't see Marcus standing up here swinging this grenade flail. Like, you're supposed to be all stealthy and wait till the right moment to shoot the explosive tank so that way they don't notice you. I feel like they should notice me swinging this thing, right? Because they're looking around like dumbasses, trying to figure out where all the bad guys are. There they go, all dead at once. This game is kind of slow to start up, but I get it. You know, it's part of making the game friendly, introducing it to as many people as possible. I just really want to shoot dudes. Delta out! What'd you say these guys got? Rust lung, emotion sickness. Cases have been popping up all over since the light mass bombing. It was a horrible way for a warrior to die. Uh, contagious? They say it's not, but I'd keep my distance. No argument here. The light mass bombing is what they used to try and kill all the locusts in the previous game. It didn't work out, but it did get rid of the krill, which is an enemy type that we won't see in this game as a result. So here's our first enemies. The standard gun we have is the Lancer. Fires in a really consistent stream. Lots of bullets fly toward the enemy. Not terribly accurate, but at close range, it's great, because you can pump the enemy full of so many bullets, it doesn't matter where you fucking shoot them at. Also, it has a chainsaw attached to it. Now, personally, I prefer the Locust rifle we just picked up. It fires slower, but it seems more accurate, and I can't tell if it does more or less damage than the Lancer, but it's not really important. What matters is that I like it more. Fire, fire. There are gears and civilians in this building. By keep us posted, do you want an update every time I kill a single locust or only when when they're all gone? I just want to know. So even though it's a good idea to stay in cover early on in the game up until midway through the game, you can leave cover a lot and just slowly approach enemies and shoot them to fucking death. Anyway, I promised I'd explain active reload. What active reload is, is whenever you press the reload button, there's a little mini game. And if you perform the mini game at just the right time, like that, you get extra powerful shots, which kill enemies way faster. So active reload makes the game way easier if you pull it off properly. However, if you completely flub active reload and stop the timer when it's in the gray, then, oh, hold on. Gotta take care of this guy good and proper. If you completely fuck up the active reload minigame and press the reload when it's in the in the black, then uh, then you just jam the gun. And that sucks. Something important to note is that your AI buddies are not useless. Their bullets do hurt enemies, and later in the game, in specific circumstances, you can just let your AI take out uh, all the enemies for you if you want. That's an option. This little cover dance these guys are doing doesn't impress me. 
I've seen some good cover dancing before in Uncharted, and this is fucking nothing compared to that. So what we're doing right here is you can press the Y button to finish off enemies with more flourish. It doesn't give you a bonus or anything, it just looks funny. Or looks cool, depending on your preference. You know, I'm not one to judge. So when we head out here into the courtyard, we get our first look at a Reaver, which is a fairly standard mid-boss enemy. We kill a couple of these locusts and then the Reaver appears. And it's supposed to be really threatening looking and kind of cinematic. It flies off after a little bit so that way you don't have to fight it yet. But you fight plenty of them later. But instead of actually looking at the Reaver or taking this cinematic moment seriously, we're going to run toward this guy as fast as possible and punch the living fuck out of him. And by the time we're done punching him, the Reaver will have flown off. So we didn't even get to look at it. But the most important thing is that we punch that Locust to death. That is what we got out of this situation. That's what matters. The encounters in this hospital are kind of easy, but, you know, they're introducing you to the idea of using the environment as cover. And there's a lot of different environmental objects to use as cover in this hospital. So even though as someone who's played a cover-based shooter, this seems like nothing to me, for people new to the genre, or just, you know, normal people in general who aren't that familiar with games, this is a really good idea, this location. Really gets the player used to what's going on. So even though it's not my favorite part of the game, I do like it because it's a good teaching tool. In the original Gears of War, there's a lot more slow atmospheric moments. This one's a lot more action-packed, and I prefer it that way just because I like shooting more. Here's the cafeteria. I love the cafeteria because flanking enemies in here is fun, even though there's only a couple of them. For some reason, Dom is scripted to say that one of the grubs falls face first into the salad, even if you shoot their face off, which I'm going to do right here. Damn, Marcus, see that? Grub went face first into the salad. I feel like he was just really, really determined to use that one-liner, regardless of whether it made any fucking sense, because its face was gone. You saw the face disappear. So, uh, this gunship falling through the ceiling looks really cool, but sometimes it doesn't seem to trigger for me. It triggered that time, though, thankfully. So, I'm not quite sure where I'm getting shot from right here. It's probably something obvious I'm just missing. Thankfully, I didn't die because that would be embarrassing, but I did get shot quite a lot. Anyway, you can let Dom and Ty take care of these enemies if you want. There's absolutely no reason for you to personally kill them, because there's only a couple. Oh, I wanted to use this guy as a meat shield. I didn't get the opportunity, though. This upcoming reception area is fun, even though it's really easy. I feel like they could have put more enemies in this reception area, because they give you some nice cover at the reception desk, so you can be flanked by enemies. But, uh, there's only a few enemies. That being said, we do get to send this monitor flying. Look at it go. Alright, so normally, uh, the enemies come from this place I'm looking toward right now. But they come from the opposite direction this time. And I've never seen that happen before. Maybe it randomly chooses which area they come from. And it, it's just so happened that previously they always came from this area. But now they come from behind us. Anyway, uh, it's not much of a, not much of an ambush, only a couple enemies, but still the first level, so, you know, that's to be expected. But when there's only, like, one or two, you can just walk right up to them and gun them down, like you're playing a non-cover base shooter. Not that I'm complaining about that, that's equally satisfying. It's just, uh, just these guys aren't particularly threatening, you know? And I might get a good chance here to use the chainsaw bayonet. I don't like the chainsaw bayonet because even though it looks cool, you have to rev it up before you use it, and it's kind of impractical. Oh, here we go. I much prefer doing melee with the other guns because you don't have to, you know, charge them before you do melee. We're nearly outside of the hospital now, and when we get outside of the hospital, that's where the real fun starts. So I'm pretty excited for that. Just have to wait for Jack to open the door. What the hell are you doing here, Rook? Area I was guarding got too hot, Sergeant. These gears rounded me up to fight, sir. So why aren't you out there fighting? Re reloading, sir. I still don't have that trick down. Better learn fast. Let's get out there, Delta. Grab some cover. We gotta dig in before we can get down there. 
dig in before we get down there, Marcus says. Here, let me show you how it's actually done. Throw a grenade to check there's no one on the far left, and then just move on in and take cover behind this car. Flawless victory. Hey, another Reaver. It can attack us this time, but it'll go away in a moment. Yep, there it goes. Really not a threat. Later, you'll have to actually fight them, and they'll be a threat then. But now they're just here to look cool. Like that King Raven gunship. Looks really cool. We don't have to fight that at any point, though, because it's one of ours. Alright, so. Flanking the enemies through this upcoming store. Kind of mindless, but really fun. The game points you directly to the store to flank the enemies, so there's no reason not to do it. It's a great opportunity for the Lancer, though. This is a situation where the Lancer absolutely fucking mows through the enemies. Look at this. Watch them all fucking fall over and die. You can take cover behind pretty much anything, by the way. Including, I don't know what this is, but it looks too small to take cover behind. It's not, though. You can totally take cover behind that. The Lancer is so good for this section. You just kind of shoot in any general area on the enemies and keep holding the button. I think that's like the fifth execution in this video. Normally you want to pick up the enemies and use them as meat shields, but it's so unnecessary during this particular segment because this is the first level. The first real level, anyway. Good job, Carmine. Saw that guy right in half. I think that was Carmine doing that. I don't have my glasses on at the moment. This is a very me me very meaty pistol we have. Picked it up off of locusts. And I think that's all the enemies gone. See you next video. Never seen the locusts run like this. Running away won't help! I'll just shoot during your asses! You are pissed today. Damn right. I missed my family. I'll kill every one of these bastards. Nice work, Delta. And Rook. Carmine. You did good. Well, thanks, Sergeant Phoenix. Control, this is Delta. Enemy threat eliminated. Over. Copy that, Delta. Everything okay on your end? Yeah, it was close. But I got out in time. What'd you find? I... Tell me, Anya. Don't bullshit me. The Jane Doe I mentioned? She fits the description, but... Well, looks like she was released a few days ago. We don't have any info after that. There's gotta be another lead, or... Or something, right? I'm sorry, Dom. That's it. I'm sorry. Damn it! Not again! I've lost her again! Ah! God damn it! Copy that, Anya. Delta out. Dom, you okay? Just... I'll catch up with you in a sec, Marcus. All right? Yeah. Whatever you need. Guys, let's go. strangers to war. After all, we've been fighting for as long as we can remember. War is all we know. In the past, we fought for emulsion. We fought for country. We fought for freedom. But all that changed after E-Day. For 15 years, We've been fighting for our very survival against inhuman, genocidal monsters. But it is a fight. We cannot continue. Humanity faces extinction unless we end this war now. 
So why land down, Sergeant? Why not just drill down here? Just Centos are one place it can't dig through, and land down's a perfect spot to hit them on their own turf. Heard there's a shitload of grubs there, Sergeant. More like ten shitloads. We had hoped the light mass bombing would decimate the Locust Horde. But they survived. And have returned stronger than ever. They brought with them a force that can sink entire cities. Even Jacinto, our last beacon of hope through all these dark days, is now at risk. Soon we'll have nothing left to defend. And that means we have only one option. Attack. Gears, what I ask of you now is not an easy thing, but it is necessary. If we are to survive, if we are to live long enough to see the seasons pass, our children grow and experience a time of peace that we have never known, we must now take this fight to the Locust. We will go to where they live, and where they breed, and we will destroy them! This is the day we take the battle to the heart of the enemy. This is the day that we correct the cause of human history! This is the day we ensure our survival and the species! Soldiers of the Cog, my fellow Gears, go forth and bring back the hope of humanity! Oh, welcome to the big sock, Sergeant Phoenix. You ready to hit the road? You know it. Well, let's go chunk some bullets of them grubs. <laughs> 